This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about whether Coinbase is a quote unquote Bitcoin black hole. We have in the coming weeks and months a number of Bitcoin spot ETFs that will probably be approved. The biggest one, of course, is BlackRock. And most of these ETF providers are going to be storing the actual Bitcoin that backs their ETF at Coinbase. Coinbase will be the custodian, as we can see here, Coinbase down the row with a few exceptions, Van Eck using Gemini and Wise Origin using Fidelity. So a lot of Bitcoin that's going to be going into Coinbase. And so the question is, is Coinbase a black hole? Will the Bitcoin go into Coinbase and never come out again and somehow get trapped there? I think this is something similar to saying that the Roman Empire is a black hole, the gold and silver will go in and never come out. And of course, on a long enough time horizon, the gold and silver always does end up coming out after the sack of Rome and in the events leading up to it. You could also say that Mansa Musa and the Mali Empire was a black hole. They were going to end up owning all the gold and they did produce and own a lot of the gold at the time. But of course, the Mali Empire is no more, and most people haven't even heard of Mansa Musa. You could say the British Empire is a black hole, they're going to own the whole world. But it turns out that the real threat to the UK was actually kitchen knives, unfortunately. On a more recent time scale, of course, people said the same thing about GBTC, about the grayscale Bitcoin trust. Here's Michael Taborski saying grayscale is a black hole for Bitcoin. The coins go in and they never go out. It's amazing they're able to source them in such quantities. Of course, grayscale ended up having problems. And now if grayscale is actually allowed to convert to a spot ETF, you can be sure that lots of their Bitcoin will exit this quote unquote black hole. It's not a very strong black hole when investors redeem their units rather than staying around and paying the outrageous 2% management fee. Some will probably stay around and do that, but many will not, or the fee will come down or something like this. But there will be movement of Bitcoin in and out of these custodians. And you have to ask yourself, do you really think that Larry Fink, who's the CEO of BlackRock, wants to use the human phalluses company to custody his ETF? Here's Brian Armstrong, also known as the human phallus in the industry. Coinbase is just a few steps above FTX, unfortunately, but when they're one of the few US Bitcoin custodians that have been left standing. I think Larry Fink would prefer to use Fidelity custody instead of Coinbase, but of course Fidelity has a competing spot Bitcoin ETF of its own. Larry Fink would probably prefer to use Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan as his custodian if they offered the service. These Wall Street birds like to stick together. And this is one reason I think you could argue that Jamie Dimon should be fired by his board for being such a stubborn old fool and refusing to tap into a major potential profit center for the bank. He could actually be the custodian. JP Morgan could be the custodian for the new BlackRock ETF if Jamie Dimon wasn't such a stubborn old dinosaur. Here in a clip, uh, I believe this was in front of Congress, saying I've always been deeply opposed to crypto Bitcoin. If I were the government, I'd close it down, thus also betraying his complete ignorance of the subject. At some point, JP Morgan will get into the Bitcoin business or JP Morgan will no longer be in business. If you're a financial company and you refuse to have contact with Bitcoin, this is not gonna work very well over the coming decade. And yes, I get it, having the too big to fail banks Turning into Bitcoin custodians is not exactly my idea of a libertarian utopia either, though it would markedly improve the quality of their collateral. However, Bitcoin is global money for 8 billion people. People are going to hold it in many different ways, whether it's on layer one, layer two, something like Lightning, or in the form of a Bitcoin ETF, a futures ETF, or a spot ETF. So I think we're going to see a world of many different Bitcoin custodians. And why wouldn't Apple and Google create their own Bitcoin banks as well? This would be a vertical that would allow them to expand the money business. And personally, I'd much rather trust Apple with some sort of Bitcoin custodianship rather than JP Morgan. Of course, I don't want to trust big tech or anyone else. That's why I'm a sovereign Bitcoiner and I hold my own keys. But the vast majority of people don't seem to be and perhaps never will be that interested in self-sovereignty until they get rugged, until they get wrecked, and then perhaps some of them will wake up. For example, how many people currently hold their personal stashes of Bitcoin on Coinbase and Cash App? I imagine there's still quite a few people, hopefully no regular listeners of this channel are doing that. Hopefully you've withdrawn it at this point and hold your Bitcoin on a hardware wallet like the Blockstream Jade 
or the cold card and thus control your own keys. But a lot of people still hold their Bitcoin on Coinbase or Cash App or Gemini or one of the exchanges or apps. Well, they eventually get rugged probably and then someone else will end up owning their Bitcoin or maybe their Bitcoin will be permanently lost, in which case that makes all of us Bitcoiners richer in a pro rata fashion because lost or burned coins are a pro rata contribution to holders on the network. So this is not something we need to really worry about. Also owning more coins does not give you any extra power over the protocol because Bitcoin is proof of work, unlike Ethereum, which is proof of stake and could thus end up getting completely captured by a spot ETF as all the holders of it, the custodian and the ETF provider become the validators. This is unlikely to be approved in the US though, as we discussed yesterday. I don't think this is something that Gensler is going to approve, at least in the near term. Well, the US government eventually end up owning a lot of Bitcoin. If they're smart, if it's smart and wants to survive, it certainly will. But I haven't seen very few, I haven't seen very many signs of intelligence coming out of Washington DC these days. So I wouldn't worry about this too much. The good news though, is that you will survive even if the government does, doesn't, or someone else doesn't. The good news is that you will survive if you own Bitcoin and hold it on a hardware wallet. So buy Bitcoin, the real thing. Don't buy a Bitcoin ETF or any other Bitcoin IOU and thus have your Bitcoin sitting in Coinbase as a custodian rather than in your own sovereign control. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.